Okay, when, before, when I first started this job, I was sitting at my sister's place, Laurel O'Meara, sitting there, and Cyril Hunter and Michael Sarego pulled up there and asked me if I wanted a job, and I had no job, so I straight as I just jumped on, rolled my swag, and we was off spraying, spraying weed, all the weeds and Pakistani trees along the Fitzroy River, right up to Christmas Creek. And during all that time we were spraying, we, a lot of things, bad things happened to everyone on the river and all that. When we was all working hard there, we had, when we used to spray, we used to mix two big jugs of the 245T, the poison, and put it in a drum of diesel. We used to do that every day, just mixing poison and spraying it out of the bush. And we just had, we, when we was filling up all our containers, spray containers, we had the poison just blowing with the breeze onto us, and we had, we had leakage on our containers. We had no mask, no real working clothes. We just had our shorts and whatever we came, came with to the bush. No, nothing, no real good gear to work with. We're just working with our own gear. And, but we, we had our fridges and all our meat and everything on the Toyota and on the trucks. All our feed was on, mixed with all the poison there on the same trucks and Toyotas. We didn't know nothing about it, that it was that poison. But we, after a while, we were spraying. A few boys I had to bring in the shade because they were getting blacked out, they were blacked out and all that. I blacked out a few times. I had to go sit down. Some days we didn't, couldn't go work. We'd jump in the main road. One of the main road blocks is to work along the road. To have a break from the poison, we used to, we used to ring them up on the two ways to pick us up and we used to help them work along the road. But that's when we were having a break, but it was just all day, just poison. And I had poison all over me. One day, we was in the thick scrub and all the poison, all the wind started blowing all the poison when I was filling up the containers. And it was going onto my jeans and I didn't realize what was happening. Then I was just scratching all day. Scratching my balls all day. Couldn't stop scratching them. After the day's work, we'd all go down to the river and have a bath. But when I went down, I just went down and had a look. I had no skin left on my balls or anything. Nothing was on it. Just real light skin was there. I got the biggest fright. But then when we all jump in the river for bath, all you could see is just rainbow color in the whole river. The whole river was just like rainbow from all the poison coming off all our bodies. We used to sleep in it. Our swag used to smell. As soon as you roll your swagger, that's when you could smell is that poison. We said, people thought we had scabies from scratching stuff, scratch our arms and everything, and we just had sores everywhere. One stage I started getting, when I scratched myself in my chest and my guts, I just had big lumps, like blooming welding marks or something, it just come up, big lumps. Well, I just got picked up and I knew I had a job, and I just went out with the boys. And that was it, we just were spraying. They just told me to fill my container up, and they showed me what weed to spray, and that's all we done. We never have no training or nothing like that. Not even a training. Protection gear? No protection gear. We had just had our own clothes. Then I think once they did, they bought overalls for us, that's all. But the overalls are just filling the poison anyway. And our mask, the first mask, we had was paper mask, what you see in hospital, you know? Then they send a couple of those other masks, but then when you wear it in the bush, it just starts hot, breathing into it. So everyone was just using the paper, and we only had two of the other masks, but it was nothing. Just that much poison us. And I went to the doctor in Broome now for my, when the thing went on my balls. Doctor didn't see me, just a nurse seen me and gave me some cream. And I went back to work. So I was just there with that. When that cream finished, I was still getting hitty there, you know? So I was just scratching my fucking, oh, sorry, my balls every day. 
day and night, no stop. It was just red road on the way every day and night for years. We had them all. We had all the chemicals stacked up in a little shed just out of Derby, say four case out of Derby or something like that. And uh, it was just full of chemical in there. So we used to just take them out of there and just load them onto the trucks. This big truck would take uh, the truck full of chemical for nine days. Go out and just spray every day, and that is, it's a like dark, coky color and real strong smell and just make you sweat and everything, real bad. Well, I've I seen it I've seen it. A lot of people with like sores all over them and scratching. And I've seen a lot of boys black out at the bush, just too much, headaches. We had boys got to stay home because they couldn't go work. They all bugging, all headache. And, and we never ever went to town to hospital. We just stayed in a camp. And that's all we done. No one went to hospital until we went into town for a day off. I went and seen a doctor Wong in the one of the hospitals in David. What hospital, Doctor Wong? The Kimberley Hospital, eh? Or Doctor Spargo was? Yeah, Kimberley Health. Yeah, Kimberley Health. I went to that hospital, seen Doctor Wong. He gave me a week off because he seen how all the poisonous how all the sores we had and everything on our arms and everything. Well, I know there's a lot of, a few of my mates passed away and young, and there's all uh, fit boys. And I could see some other boys just, you could see their skin and things, they're all not the same, you know, they just look different. Mm -hmm. I had a friend in David, uh, Freddie Watson. He was a big vlog now, and I, I just seen him a couple of months ago, and yeah, I couldn't believe that it was him riding his bicycle. Yeah. And we went to broom and done a lot of spraying. We killed a lot of tailor fruit trees in the back of people's yards. Uh, well, when we went that bush, we were spraying with a poison called 245T. And I think 24D too. Yeah, but we went to broom and just sprayed all them trees with the 245T. Filled, we filled four containers up. And that was enough to just kill all the like when you spray the trees at bush, five to six days, it's just all yellow. You, you can't believe, you just see a big yellow forest of trees in the desert every when you spray. That's what you see. Once, they all, once a week over after we finish spraying, all you can see is just yellow, no other green trees. That's how quick them things died and just imagine the thing working in our skin. I was home there one day and Carl Drysdale came around and asked me if I want contract. I wanted a contract. But he told me to get a couple of boys, so I picked up Patrick Gushy Gushy and Bernard Rowe. Bernard Rowe just finished school to young blood. He came out Christmas Creek with me. Spraying and he had like 40 drums left. They wanted us to finish the whole 40. But we didn't finish the whole 40. We, we just about went through good enough. But we just had this one old truck and every day we used to go out spraying, and when we come back to the station, we wasn't even allowed to eat in the kitchen with the other stockmen. We had to wait till they leave, then we was allowed to go in there. That's how they was treating us, it, it, even the station workers. And the manager had a place there where you could go sit on and watch DVDs. We wasn't allowed to go there. We was like knocked back. And we were still spraying for the station, and we were just there. They wouldn't let us do nothing. Yeah, well, when I come back home, every nine days we used to go out for. Everyone would get back home, all our clothes, just think of poison and our swag, sheets and pillow slips. We used to wash them in the same washing machine what everyone else washing them. So I can just imagine all that poison would be in other people's clothes too then. But that's what, what is happening, just come back, wash clothes with our family. I got my granddaughter, and a Dr. Harper came and seen us one year. And he, he explained to us what all these things about, what he was doing. Then he told us, he told all of us, if anything gonna happen, it won't happen to you or your kids, but something could happen to your kids' kids. And right now I got my granddaughter, she's weak on one side. She's 13 years old, huh? And she grew up like that. 
and I blame myself for that girl. Yeah. Yeah, and I just blame myself every time I see her. Oh, she's next to me. Yeah, it just got in my head every time one of my daughters or oh, my son misses her baby. I always think, oh, I hope nothing's going to happen, you know. And it's just killing me just thinking about all that, you know. I'm just stressed out over everything. And all the boys who used to work with us. What's happening to them all now? I've been having a few problems now with the hospital, like a diabetes and blooming low blood. I was going to hospital for, they checked me for cancer, they took something out. But all this thing just getting to me. And we've been trying for over 20 years now with the government to help us out, but just nothing. We've just been knocked back every time we done something. Oh, even our lawyers not even talking to us. You know, I ring them up in Perth, just the secretary talk to us. The lawyers are too busy. I ring them. Don't we? They tell me, they send me letter to ring them, and when I ring them, no one answer. I just want to see everybody get what they should be getting of the government. There's a lot of people got families and everything, and things happening to their kids, grandkids. I can my mate Michael Surrogate's two grandson are deaf and Fitzroy a whole screen. They deaf and I just wanna see the government come good with them. Because we've been trying all we, we sprayed it for them, you know. Sprayed it for when they just them and we figured all about us. Because when we were spraying that poison it is just all the colored boys. As soon as we finish it, and they came with a poison where you mix water. APB was just full of white people. No colored boys left. Because they used to spraying the spray. That's all. I just noticed that quick they got rid of everybody. Then just put who they wanted in. They made. We just forgotten about it. Huh?